In this tutorial, what we're going to be discussing is the Tileforce optimization uh, dialog box for version 3.04 and above. To access this, what we need to do is we need to load a car of our... Uh, it, we need two, thi two things. First of all, we need race data of um, the tire we wish to model and a car file that pertains to that data. So what we're going to do is we're going to load in a car file that pertains to our data and we're going to go to the simulate menu and select tire force modeling. As you can see, this now brings up the dialogue and as you can see, we now have a number of different options to choose from. We can optimize the tire, uh, we can basically optimize the tire force curve, which, uh, which we can optimize as a function of load and of temperature. We can, uh, uh, we can optimize the peak slip angle of the tire and uh, in lateral camber properties and longitudinal camber properties, we can dial in both the camber sensitivity and the traction ellipse properties of the tyre. Now, once again, what we need to do is, uh, our first step is we need to choose a bump profile that actually matches our data. So, what we need to do is obviously we generate a bump profile beforehand, and obviously I'll choose the appropriate bump profile, and once again, I um, uh, click here to add my monster import file. Once again, if I have something that includes loads, I click on this first, then I click on this. But I don't have loads here, so that's not ne uh, that's not needed. So I click here to import my monster import file, and this populates um, my steer acceleration speed file. Let me be very clear that the steer file uh, that um, uh, the steering that you're going to be logging is logged at the tyre as opposed to the steering wheel. This is very, very important. Okay, our next step is that what we need to do is we need to set up some signs for the signs of both our lateral our lateral acceleration and the signs for our steering because these do tend to vary from logger to logger. So the convention is um, if, uh, if you have lateral acceleration being positive for right-hand turns, you stick that as one. If you have steering for right-hand turns being positive, you have it as one. In this set of data, we had both um, a positive lateral acceleration was a left-hand turn, and positive turn, and positive steering was for a left-hand turn. So we have minus one and minus one respectively. And obviously, to optimize tires, we click on one. Now, I should also add that if you do have a situation of where you're optimizing for um, tire load, uh, for um, uh, where you do have tire loads. You can click on here to say to use the tire loads. In this situation, chassis sim will actually generate the tire loads from your logged tire uh, from uh, your logged tire loads. Let's now discuss the, the, what uh, what all the optimization settings here mean. As uh, as uh, with uh, 3.03 and earlier, these bounds here basically take the existing tire curve and basically add a delta of what you see here in newtons. So here, this is a delta of 1,000 newtons on top of the standard curve. So it goes from zero load to the max tire load. So basically, it will move these control points up and down and will do a polynomial fit. Once again, here you dial in what you expect your peak tire temperature to be, and you dial in what you want for your initial pre-slope and your post-slope values. And this basically is a square function that um, will drop uh, that will um, uh, uh, that will drop the tire temperature factor off as a function of temperature when we go off the optimum tire setting. Obviously, at the optimum tire setting, the multiplier is one, and obviously, either side of the optimum uh, tire, uh, either side of the optimum um, uh, optimum operating tire temperature, it is uh, it is not equal to one, and this multiplies this curve. Please note. When you are optimizing tire temperatures, you must optimize tire loads. Okay, to optimize tire, uh, to optimize slip angles, I simply click on here, and this is basically the delta slip of the peak slip angle specified in degrees. So, I'm, for the purposes of this illustration, I'm just going to keep that in mind. Okay, this here, uh, um, um, these settings here basically di uh, dial in your, your lateral cam properties. To optimize it, you, you click on one now. This setting here basically will give you the peak camber at which you will generate the maximum lateral, uh, your maximum lateral grip, which 
for this optimization will will um, include free and we specify a delta we want to move that up and down with. This SF Camber Y factor basically is your drop off factor as a percentage of Camber squared divided by 100. And so we specify that as initially a two and we move that up and down um, by uh, up and down uh, by one. But I would refer you to your chassis center version three documentation for that. Your longitudinal camber properties. This is your. This is basically how you dial in the longitudinal bit of the traction ellipse as well as the longitudinal sensitivity to camber. Here, this is your initial mu multiplication, which basically is a very good way of globally dialing in your traction circle ellipse. And this basically specifies a delta mu range in which to search for this. SF Camber X does exactly the same thing as SF Camber Y did, and delta SF Camber X did exactly the same um, thing, um, uh, does exactly the same thing as delta SF Camber Y did, obviously now for longitudinal. And this init mu load slope allows flexibility for the fact that the traction circle radius might vary as a function of load. So, and here you can indicate basically how you want that to vary as a function of load. Please note it's 1e to the minus 5, that's basically a Newton load divided by 1e to the minus 5. So 10,000 Newtons or 1,000 kilograms force will basically reduce that by 0.1. But ultimately I leave that to the discretion of the user as to what to dial in. Once we're happy with this, to commit we click on OK and to start our optimization, we click on start and we click on the start. I'm not going to do this right now on the simple principle that this is an operation that takes a number of hours. However, when this operation is completed, what you will see is that in the same directory of where your car file is saved, you will see these two, uh, uh, you will see these two, uh, these two files. Let me show you some files that I've generated previously. you will see a file that looks like this. It'll be a simple INI file that will give you basically all of the points that you've, uh, uh, you've optimised. So you can readily look at some uh, this in programs such as Excel or even export, export it to a Word editor. And to import that into Chassis Sim, you just simply click on the relevant tire and you just simply click on Import V3 Approximations, Optimise Tire Settings and you select the appropriate file.